welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the idea of expectation. I'm going to start off with the binomial distribution, and I'm going to move on to some different type of distribution, which we're going to see quickly. It's not difficult, although it often appears in exams. So again, the idea of expectation, you will have encountered this in uh, other exercises. Um, so here we go. Suppose we throw a coin 10 times. Right? Okay, throw a coin in the air 10 times. Fantastic. And we're going to count how many times heads comes up. So how many how many times would you expect heads to come up? Would it be strange if, it, if you get heads nine times or one time? What's normal? What would you expect to get? How many times would you expect to get heads? It's easy. You would expect to get heads five times, right? So here you go. Here we have a definition of what expectation is. I expect to get heads five times okay so if you think about it we've actually used the formula because what we had here here throwing the coin was a binomial distribution 10 times probability is one half and the way i've calculated the five is i've just multiplied 10 times one half and that's the formula of expectation and you write it like that and i can calculate calculate it 10 times one half is going to give me five which is something that makes sense so anytime you have a binomial distribution, you're going to be able to easily calculate the expected value. Let's take a look at an example. So somebody has a 70% chance in football of scoring a penalty. He's going to shoot 20 penalties in practice. So how many penalties do you reckon they're going to score? Well, again, binomial distribution. Either he scores or he doesn't, right? So 20 trials, probability of success, 7 out of 10. Let's multiply, and we get the expectation. You'd expect him to score 14 times. Great. Here's another example, which is interesting, okay? So suppose that I know a little bit this is a binomial distribution, and I have six trials, but I don't know the probability. However, they tell me the mean of the distribution is 3.2. The mean, the value in the middle. Here's something important. When they say the mean, they mean the expectation, okay? So, what I ultimately know here is that 6 times p is going to be 3.2. Hence, the probability is going to be 0 0.533. And there you go. So, important bottom line here, sometimes they'll call expectation the mean. So, what else? What else should I know about the expectation? Well, there's something else related to the binomial distribution before we completely finish off with it, which is the variance. You know how we just introduced the idea that the expectation can also be called the mean? Well, um, there's, we also have a way to calculate the variance. And remember, the variance is simply the standard deviation, remember the standard deviation, you probably remember this one clearly, squared. So just square the standard deviation and it changes name, now it's called the variance. Why? Doesn't matter. Bottom thing, you have to remember two different things. Variance, standard deviation. Standard deviation squared gives you the variance. So I have a formula, I have a way to calculate the variance if I have a binomial distribution. So again, I look at the same one, right? I have calculated my expectations. Right? Now I can expect to score 14 penalties. Remember that one? So here's the idea. Like You can calculate, looking at this uh, binomial distribution, we can calculate whether... What do, you, what do you expect them to score 13, 12? When does it start to be weird? When does it start to be unusual because you only scored 6? Maybe Jim is sick. When does it start to be unusual because maybe he scored 20? Maybe something's wrong with the goalkeeper. Right? You might want to ask yourself that. How strange is a value? And that's where we use the standard deviation to know how strange is it to find a value in a particular, at a particular distance from the mean. So the mean is 14. How do I calculate this variance? Well, I'm going to use a formula. Here it is. Now, it doesn't look very friendly, but just think that that n is the number of trials of the binomial distribution and that p is the probability. So all you have to do again is just throw in the values. Again, my number of trials is 20. My probability is 7 out of 10. So I just have to fill it in. Some calculations. 1 minus 7 tenths is 3 tenths. Make those multiplications go and you get 4.2. And that's it. That's going to be your variance. 
But remember, they asked me for the standard deviation. So how do I calculate the standard deviation? That is the square root of that. Because in the same way that the variance is the standard deviation squared, well, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Let's take a look now at this other type of distribution, which is not a binomial distribution. And the reason why it's not a binomial distribution is because there are more than two possible outcomes, maybe three, four, or perhaps even one. Now, we don't have formulas for these ones. I mean, we don't have ways to calculate things like we were calculating with the binomial distribution in these cases. We don't really have much. So there's not much to see about these. But they like to put them in the exams because they put them in situations where you have to think a little bit here or there, or perhaps you have some like conditional probability pop up out of this. Let's take a look at this one quickly. So I have these events that can go more than one way, right? Three, four, perhaps more. But it just can go, it can't go any way. I mean, there's maybe like four ways the event can go, maybe 10, maybe eight, maybe 20. But one of those ones all the time. And this happens because they are discrete. Remember, discrete means it can only have certain outcomes. It can only be like a full number, perhaps. You know, that's, that's what we call discrete mathematics. Like values can only be two or three. There's no 2.5, okay? Great. So here's an example for discrete variable distribution. This is what it looks like. This is what your typical <coughs> exam exercise looks like. You see, it's not very complicated. So you have a man, for example, that throws a dart to a dartboard. Okay, so picture this person is throwing it at this pretty simplistic dartboard. Here's a table of possible results and the probability, right, of, of each throw. So 50 points, one out of 20, 25 points, three out of 10, 10 points, very likely, three out of five. He doesn't hit the dartboard at all. This hits the wall, 1 out of 20. This is the probability of what might happen when he throws a dart to the dartboard. Now, okay, so you, you get the idea, right? It's either 50, 25, 10, or it doesn't hit a dartboard at all. Great. Now let's add up the probabilities first for a minute here. Let's do it. I get 1. <clears throat> you're going to get 1. But of course you're going to get 1. Because... Where else could a dart go? I mean, either it, <clears throat> it hits the dartboard or it doesn't hit the dartboard. That would be a wonderful binomial distribution, but I have other possible outcomes here. I have 50, 25 points, or 10 points. So I have four possible outcomes. But again, it's one of those four, like what I had with the binomial distribution. This is a discrete random variable event. Complicated name that you don't have to remember by heart. You have to understand what this is. An important thing to remember is those probabilities are always going to add up to 1. Let's take a look at an example. Before we do that, yeah, let's take a look at the problem, sorry. So here you have, fun for a game. People uh, have, uh, have to net a basketball three times and throwing the ball three times, etc. You can show the probability the person scores one, two, or three times in the following table. Great. Now, they might ask me, uh, because they, they're going to ask me something with this, but just understand this for a minute. So a person is going to throw the, throw the ball, how many times are you going to put it in? One time, two times, three times. And that's fair enough. Great. We can calculate how many times do we expect the person to put it in. And what we're going to get is not one or two or three. We're going to get a number in between, which is an indication of what's the closest possible uh, like it indicates where the average would be if a lot of people are doing this. So what would it, what would this look like? Simply you just do one times zero point five plus two times zero point four plus three times zero point one, and you add it all together and you get one point six. And you might say, well, that doesn't make sense. Somebody's not going to throw the ball and score one point six. Bat like put the ball inside the basket one point six times. It's not just not going to happen, right? Well, no, but if a lot of people are doing it and you want to ask, hey, what was the average number of times they put the ball in the net? The answer should be 1.6. That's what you should expect. That's the whole idea of this. Okay, so let's take a little side. And let's take a look at what's on your formula booklet because there's a lot of stuff here, right? So here's the expected value for discrete random variable x. 
Again, you have this E and the X just means expected value. And they tell you here, this is the way they're telling you, hey, we might call this the mean. <clears throat> Remember how I told you? Sometimes when they, mean, when they say mean, they're referring to the expectation. This is where it indicates. It's in the formula booklet. And, okay, we have this formula. This might not seem very helpful, right? With this sigma and all these X's everywhere. What does this mean? Again, remember the formula booklet sometimes can be confusing. So just remember, you take the probability, and you multiply it times a value, and then you add, you do that with all of them, you add it all together, and there you go. You did it. We also have formulas for the mean and the variance, the things that we saw. So again, you know these already of how to do these with the performa binomial distribution. So you should be able to handle these. And again, all these formulas are in your formula booklet. So all we're going to be doing is applying them. But we have to understand what they mean. Let's close up with a slight, with a quick example of perhaps a harder uh, exercise on discrete random variable. You'll see it's not really that hard, but it's a tip. I have a smartphone company, and uh, they're going to represent the probability that a player stops playing after using one, two, three, or four of the lives they have, right? And they, they uh, let's see how the probability that they retire spending all the, all the five lives. We don't have this value here. We don't have this value here, right? So they might just spend one life and then stop playing two, three, four, five, etc. And then they ask me what is the expected number of lives a player will spend. So what do I know? Remember, I know that all of these are going to add up to one. So let's do it. And I can calculate K. Because I know that all of these must add up to one. There's no other possible situation. One life, two lives, three lives, four lives, and five lives. So add it all together, I'm going to get one. Do some calculations here, and I'm going to get that the K is one fifth. And now for the second question what is the expected number of lives a player will spend? Well, I just filled up the table, right? I know that here I have one fifth. So all I have to do is. 120 times 1, 110 times 1, 1 fourth times 3, 2 fifths times 4, and my new calculated value, 1 fifth times 5, add it all up together, and I get my expectation of 3.6. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'm sorry it was so long. Uh, I'll try to improve it. But anyway, thanks for your attention. Have a good day. Goodbye.